There's no such thing as fair or unfair when it comes to fighting pirates, right? That's a core tenet of One Piece that was established from the start of the series. And so today when we see the Blackbeard pirates mercilessly ganging up on an aging Garp, resorting to sneak attacks and ambushes, much like they once did to take out the aging Whitebeard, a lot of readers might say, well, that's just how pirates fight. There are no rules. However, what many readers completely miss is the unspoken yet clear, significant distinction in how Oda writes the two types of pirates in his story. It's not about good guys or bad guys either. Rather, it's the cheaters versus the strong. Yes, no pirate expects or demands that other pirates fight fair. However, the strongest pirates, the ones with the greatest wills, the ones that have the true makings of a king, those pirates will always simply prefer to fight fairly themselves, even if the opponent chooses to cheat. This is the constant, consistent choice of the strongest throughout the series. That's right, Oda established the rule of pirates that anything goes, including cheating, yet at the same time chose to show that every single truly great pirate deliberately breaks this rule of pirates and chooses to fight honorably instead. And that is what makes the great pirates great. In a story that is all about the strength of one's spirit, there is no more fitting a way to delineate the difference between which pirates truly have what it takes to make it to the top versus the type of pirates that, at the end of the day, will always simply be pretenders to the throne. And today we will break down this key overarching difference in how pirates are written across the entirety of One Piece, and most importantly the simple reason that the Blackbeard pirates, despite being the most piratey of pirates, are ultimately destined to fall short of the top by virtue of this very pirate nature. But first I need to ask you, are you eating something right now? Or are you just hungry? Either way, do you want delicious meals delivered straight to your door at a major discount? If so, you should be using Factor, the sponsor for this video. It's summer and that's a great opportunity for you to eat healthy, but no one likes eating healthy food or planning out a healthy diet, which is why Factor plans your diet for you and delivers ready-made healthy meals that are actually designed by gourmet chefs to still taste really good. That means delicious and nutritious food that you don't have to make yourself, so you can enjoy your summer without wasting any time cooking, going to the grocery store, or planning out a healthy diet. It's made it so much easier for me knowing that I'm eating healthy without actually having to learn how to cook healthy for myself. And the best part is you can try Factor today for 50% off. Just head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code MORGE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's Factor75.com, code MORGE50 to get 50% off, link in the description below. So that aside, what's so interesting about One Piece is that while it is a series about pirates, the very traits it actually celebrates tend to be the exact opposite of how most real pirates historically operated. Honor, loyalty, bravery, these are all things that are actually put on a pedestal in One Piece. The grandest, most respected pirates all embody these virtues to an exaggerated degree. Traits like cowardice, deceit, betrayal, selfishness, and yes, cheating, all of these classic traits that we traditionally associate with pirates are actually generally assigned to particularly slimy villains who are meant to ultimately be defeated by our heroes. This is because throughout the story, Oda goes out of his way to make clear that the only real pirate ideal that is actually being glorified in this story is simply the drive for freedom, the drive to carve one's own destiny. That is the true virtue of being a pirate that Luffy embodies, but all the less savory traditional pirate traits are only ever portrayed in a negative light. See, the big misconception that many readers have is that just because Luffy accepts that cheating is fair game in a pirate's fight, that Luffy himself is okay with cheating to win. That's not the case. All this means is that Luffy's not going to complain if the other person cheats, but Luffy himself is going to win the way that he chooses, and Luffy is of course always going to naturally choose the harder path that feels more earned. We see this most clearly in the Katakuri fight. Luffy is stabbed and severely injured due to a third party, meaning that it's not a fair 1v1 fight. 
Now, Luffy doesn't complain, Luffy makes it clear that he doesn't mind, as you can't complain about fair or unfair in a pirate's duel. However, at the same time, it is established that just because Luffy doesn't mind the opponent using unfair tactics, Luffy himself refuses to stoop to something like that. It is made clear that Luffy had the option of waiting things out outside the mirror world and allowing Katakuri to get drained of his strength by being forced to maintain his observation hockey, but Luffy does not want want to win that way. Luffy outright wants to beat him at full strength in a fair fight, as that is the only way to surpass him. And so Luffy chooses to fight Katakuri straight up. That's the key difference. Luffy is always approaching each challenge with a goal. At every step of his journey, the recurring mantra is, I will surpass you. That is the purpose of each fight. Every opponent is an opportunity, a stepping stone to get closer and closer to becoming Pirate King. And Luffy will not feel satisfied becoming the Pirate King through any sort of shortcuts. For instance, Luffy hates the idea of just stealing the road poneglyphs and sneaking his way to One Piece without actually having to overcome the Yonko. As to Luffy, Pirate King is only earned if he surpasses the Emperors competing for it. Luffy will never accept any sort of shortcut in this race, just as Luffy will not accept any any sort of shortcut in a fight. He wants to win through his own strength. The same reason Luffy ultimately decides to fight Katakuri without cheating is the same reason Luffy ultimately decides that he wants to fight Kaido by himself. This is what the strongest willed pirates do. The strongest willed pirates do not cheat. This is a canonical fact about Luffy, by the way. It should be evident simply from reading the manga, but Oda has also outright confirmed in SBS form that Luffy hates winning through cheating, to the point that Luffy would not even use Future Sight to win a simple game of rock, paper, scissors. Luffy's drive to do things the right way and avoid fighting unfairly is so extreme that he literally chooses to yell out his moves when fighting Fujitora, because even though he desperately wants to win, he doesn't think it would be fair to fight a blind man, even a marine admiral, without at least letting him know what moves he's going to do. And this same characteristic of Luffy, of not wanting to cheat a victory, is the same thing that we see with all other strong-willed pirates. Katakuri is a pirate too. He knows that all is technically fair in a pirate's duel, but there is something that goes beyond being a pirate, which is one's own sense of honor and spirit. And that is what drives Katakuri to even the playing field before resuming his fight with Luffy. And note right here that the reason Katakuri no longer thinks that Luffy is below his level is not because Luffy has suddenly impressed him in combat, as all Luffy did was get hit by an attack, the moment that Katakuri decided that Luffy was on his level is when he saw how Luffy responded to the unfair cheap shot, which was to not complain about it and keep going. Katakuri can now see that Luffy is cut from the same cloth as him, and carries that same strong spirit, which is symbolically followed up with both of them flexing their disposition of the king. Something that weak cheaters such as Flambe both literally and figuratively cannot stand in the face of. See, that's the unwritten rule. In a pirate's duel, cheating is allowed, but in a duel between kings, there is no place for such a thing. We see this type of mentality among all great pirates with powerful hockey and strong wills. They only want what they deem as a fair fight. They want to conquer their opponent in a true victory. Mihawk won't even fight Shanks now that Shanks has lost an arm. Kaido, to this day, bemoans the fact that he only defeated Odin due to outside interference. And actually, this headstrong conqueror spirit is so absurd that whereas someone like Queen will happily rely on a surprise attack and sea stone to capture Big Mom, Kaido views something like that as such a false victory that Kaido will literally unchain a captive Big Mom and give her back her weapon so that he can defeat her straight up. That is what it means to be a king. Remember, Kaido and Big Mom were not on the same side at this point. This wasn't Kaido doing a friend a favor. At this moment, they still very much hated each other and had been literally trying to kill each other for years. They did reconcile off screen after the duel, but at this moment in time, Kaido literally has one of his lifelong most hated enemies, his number one Yonko rival, one of the only three other people he needs to eliminate to become Pirate King, sitting there tied up and completely helpless in front of him, and he doesn't even think 
think twice about letting her go so that he can defeat her the right way. And the crazy thing is, Big Mom seems to be completely expecting this reaction and is ready to go herself. She is a Yonko just as much as Kaido, and she knows that this is how the strong do things. That's why this moment of silent, unquestioned honor between the strong is immediately followed fittingly by the splitting of the sky, as it's a clash between two great, uncompromising wills. This all goes back to the main idea of the story of One Piece. Even though the series is technically framed around pirates, the further we go, the more we realize that the story is really more so about dominion over the seas. Individuals are simply labeled pirates by the government to maintain a semblance of authority over the world, but in reality, the strongest pirates are their own sovereign entities. Emperors in in their own right, all competing to become king of the ocean. This is a story of kings masquerading as a story of pirates, which is why towards the top we see that those that have climbed the highest and achieved the most have done so precisely because they have the spirit of kings, and act and approach the world with the disposition of a king. It is the weaker, earlier opponents like Don Krieg, Foxy, Crocodile, and so on that act more like traditional pirates in their approach to battles, happily cheating, then falling short, and then failing to understand why they don't have what it takes to reach the highest level of the sea. It should be noted that even though this is more common among villains, it isn't even really a distinction between good and bad pirates. As I said at the beginning, it's a distinction between cheaters and the strong. Because even protagonists like Law and Capone Beige, while successful pirates in their own right, are nothing compared to the likes of Shanks, Whitebeard, Kaido, and so on, as Law and Capone Beige are ultimately cheaters and schemers. Law is brave in combat, of course, but ultimately he's always trying to think up of some clever plan or scheme to eliminate his opponents without actually having to fight them straight up, just as Beige tries to do. There's a reason that these characters are not Conqueror's hockey users as they are very clearly written differently than the kings. They are great pirates, yes, but they do not have the disposition of the king. As the strongest pirates with the disposition of the king, whether they be good or evil, will always prefer to earn their victories through their own strength and nothing else. And then finally, we have Blackbeard. He's the one exception to this rule. Whereas all these other cheating, scheming pirates across the story seem to have a set limit to their success, as after all, none of their schemes or dirty tactics or cheating will ever allow them to reach the true level of the strongest, Blackbeard has managed to actually break that glass ceiling in a sense. He's the one pirate who seems to actually have managed to climb towards the top of the ladder and be a true final contender for One Piece while still genuinely acting like a pirate rather than a king. Among the strongest pirates, Blackbeard, the one dirty player, is the anomaly, not the norm. There's a reason that Whitebeard knows instinctively that out of everyone competing for the One Piece, Blackbeard, of all people, does not deserve it. I talk about this more at length in my analysis of Blackbeard, but the point is that whereas Luffy always avoids cheating and shortcuts, climbing up the ladder to King through overcoming challenges head on, Blackbeard is a cheater through and through. He'll avoid every challenge that he can and take every shortcut that he can. He'll backstab his crewmates, he'll ambush his old captain when he's weakened, he'll never take on a fight that he doesn't think he can win, he'll stock up on powerful devil fruits. Blackbeard embodies all the negative, stereotypical traits of pirates, and the way that his crew fights reflects that, as seen in their match with Garp. I definitely believe that's a large aspect of why Oda deemed it necessary to give Blackbeard multiple overpowered devil fruits, as the rest of the Yonko, good or bad, have made it to the top mainly through their strength of spirit it, their hockey, and indeed the true defining characteristic of the Pirate King should be to have the strongest hockey. Blackbeard, as the one exception and the least deserving, is the only one who got to the top through Devil Fruits instead, which doesn't represent one's spirit at all. And in fact, both of Blackbeard's fruits reflect his foul play, as he earned both of them by backstabbing and taking advantage of his former crewmates and captain. In fact, Blackbeard is such a cheater that he even breaks the rules of Devil Fruits themselves by eating multiple fruits when you should only be able to eat one. His very abilities seem to be the definition of cheating the system. 
So looking at Blackbeard and the Blackbeard Pirates, I think we can applaud them for having actually made it this far by being a group of cheating, conniving scum in a world where honor and a courageous spirit actually tends to get you further. It's certainly interesting to see a group of pirates that genuinely act like pirates being set up to be the final rivals of the Straw Hat crew. But at the same time, let's not forget what these Blackbeard Pirates are at the end of the day, which is a group of bums. A ragtag group of corrupt, pathetic figures that have stolen most of their power by murdering for devil fruits. Even their first mate would rather fight with sneak attacks than actual hockey confrontations. But ultimately, in the One Piece world, cheaters don't prosper. The Blackbeard Pirates are set up to be the perfect and final example of how following the wrong path will ultimately come back to bite you, and that there is merit to taking the hardest, more honorable course, as Luffy and the Straw Hats have always done. That is the very reason that they're being written to be the Straw Hat's final opponents for One Piece, to showcase the difference between the right and wrong path, once and for all. So I'm tired of hearing readers spit back the idea that all cheating is allowed in Pirate's duels, because it's missing the point of the message that is actually being demonstrated consistently throughout the story. Don't let Crocodile's words from back then fool you. There is a reason that he never understood the true level of the seas. Because while it's true that pirates don't fight fair, the Pirate King doesn't need to cheat. So let me know your thoughts on the Pirate Code below, and if you enjoyed this video, definitely like and subscribe, and you can get my thoughts on the specific characterizations of each crew in terms of cheating versus playing it fair in my Extended Thoughts podcast by supporting me on Patreon. Just hit the link in the description below.